Hello everyone, my name is Colt Eichelberger and I'm one of the PGA1 pharmacy residents at OSU Medical Center. I'm excited to be here to share with you all my research, which is looking at doxycycline versus penicillin G benzathine for the treatment of syphilis in patients with HIV. So starting off with a little bit of background. So as far as syphilis, the infection goes, it's caused by the spirochete treponema pallidum. Um, that's an infection which can be transmitted through sexual intercourse, perinatally, um, or by coming in con into contact with the syphilitic uh, canker. The untreated disease can actually progress to various stages. We'll talk about those a little bit more in just a little bit. Um, and it is associated with an, an enhanced risk of acquiring HIV. So it's important to appropriately treat patients both with and without HIV. A little bit of background on the treatment. So the primary agent we use is this penicillin G benzathine. This is our gold standard. Um, but we do have an alternative agent, doxycycline. And this can, is generally used in patients with a penicillin allergy. So uh, something that would preclude the use of the penicillin. Um, however, the efficacy of doxycycline in treating syphilis, specifically in patients with HIV, um, is not well documented. So this poses the question that we're trying to answer with this research. Does doxycycline treat syphilis as well as penicillin G benzathine in these patients with concomitant HIV? Just a brief look at the dosing, mainly included this slide for completeness sake. Um, we have our early stage, late latent, and late stage, uh, and pretty much the doses that I ran into were these penicillin G benzathine, um, and doxycycline in the early stage, which that looked like 2.4 million units IM for one dose, um, or with the doxycycline, it was 100 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, versus in the late latent group, we had the penicillin being three doses um, once weekly, and then the doxycycline was over a 28-day period, so just a lengthened duration, essentially. So looking at the study design, so our objectives, we were wanting to compare the effectiveness of doxycycline in treating syphilis in the HIV population against this traditional standard penicillin G benzathine. Also assess the appropriateness of therapy for both syphilis and other STIs, and then identify commonly reported adverse effects to uh, either of those agents we use to treat syphilis. Looking at the study criteria, for inclusion criteria, patients had to be at least 18 years of age, also diagnosed with HIV and have a diagnosis of new or recurrent syphilis, as well as a documented prescription for doxycycline or that penicillin G benzathine. Exclusion criteria, neurosyphilis at the time of treatment. Um, so neurosyphilis, pretty much if you saw on my dosing slide, I didn't really cover it, um, but we just use penicillin for neurosyphilis patients. So um, it would not be appropriate to look at that in this study. People who are pregnant, uh, less than 18 years of age, or if we had ins insufficient data to determine treatment response, um, essentially there was uh, too late. Uh, it was like a very recent diagnosis or it was uh, there was no follow-up, so we didn't have repeat uh, RPR data. Looking at the methods, it was a retrospective chart review. So I just looked back at charts that we pulled. Uh, the primary endpoint was resolution of syphilis infection with the secondary endpoints being presence of co-infection and reported adverse reactions to treatment. Our sample size, we started with 370 charts. We excluded 236 and ended up with 134, uh, with 113 of those being the penicillin G arm and then 21 being the doxycycline arm. So moving on to the results and conclusions. So in the penicillin group, we saw infection resolved 103 out of 113 patients. That was a 91.15% uh, percentage resolution. I broke it up by the stage, latent, secondary, or primary, but you can see in all three categories, the majority of patients saw infection resolution. Um, I will notice in the secondary, all of those patients did have a uh, resolution of syphilis. Looking at the doxycycline arm, we had similar results. Infection resolved in 18 out of 21 patients. That was 85.71%, so a slightly lower percentage than in the penicillin group. Um, we did have half of the patients in the latent group not um, seeing resolution. Again, in the secondary group, everybody, that whole one patient, um, saw resolution of infection. And in the primary, um, we had very good results. Looking briefly at the secondary results, um, we did have some presence of co-infection and so, uh, very few uh, reported adverse reactions to treatment. Um, and so this was likely just due to there not being too many uh, major reactions. So in conclusion, uh, penicillin G benzathine group, it was larger, likely due to it being standard of care. We're generally just using this more often. Uh, resolution of infection occurred in less patients than the doxycycline arm, um, but it's difficult to interpret those findings just because we had treatment groups that were dissimilar in number and infection type. 
the co-infection was not common among either group and it appeared to show no correlation to treatment success. Um, and then, like I mentioned already, those adverse effects of treatment were rarely reported um, in either group. Here are my references and I appreciate you listening to me in this little quick presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email listed on this slide. Thank you.